Hi everyone, this is Dr. K. I wanted to uh, talk about um, uh, critical illness with COVID-19 and how we're taking care of those clients these days. Um, I recently uh, read a study from uh, New York City and they tracked um, uh, clients who were in the ICU and, um, and what they're doing so far. I'm going to share the details in a later video. But the question that came up recently was, um, should we use uh, something like a BiPAP device for providing oxygen? It goes uh, through a mask and uh, oxygen is, um, oxygen or, or uh, regular air is sent with pressure. And uh, we use that as a step before putting a tube down the um, uh, throat and uh, hooking, up, hooking them up to the breathing machine. So initially we were told that uh, we should not use the, uh, the BiPAP with the mask because uh, it's going to spread the air uh, virus into the surrounding air and cause more problems. So uh, initially the recommendation was to, uh, for anybody whom we think that they are going to fail or, or they may need more support to go and uh, put a tube down their throat and hook them up to a breathing machine sooner than later. So that was the initial recommendation and that, that was followed in most centers. Lately, a research has shown that most of those people are dying. And we really don't know if they're dying because of this intervention or because the disease is so severe that they're dying. And either one is possible, we really don't know. Now the new recommendation from the Society of Critical Care Medicine and other national institutes is to use high flow oxygen and obviously after that use the bi-level uh, pressure or BiPAP and that is actually putting 20 millimeters mercury pressure and using the BiPAP as much as possible. Obviously, you know, not everybody can tolerate that much pressure. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, you know, any, anything above 15 millimeters, you know, it's uh, pressure is coming in, um, the air is being pushed in into the lungs, all the way into the lungs, and, the, and most of the times the clients are still awake, so um, they may not be able to sleep, they may not be comfortable, and those are some practical considerations. The other um, issue is if they're unconscious or um, you know, if they're actively vomiting, if they're nauseated, then we cannot use the mask because it's, um, you know, we have to put a tube at that time. So there are a lot of practical considerations before uh, we start doing that. So, uh, so right now it's up to the practitioner. Um, I think most of us are doing the BiPAP and then if they fail, then we move to putting a tube down the throat and hooking them to a, to a breathing machine. We call it mechanical ventilation. So this weekend on Saturday, uh, I'm gonna share an example of a client that we uh, treated and um, see how the hospital progress went. The client was in the hospital for 17 days. So I'll share that in the, in the presentation. You're welcome to attend that on Saturday. Um, I'm gonna give you the details about the timing and so forth, um, either tomorrow or day after. So, um, so again, the controversy still remains, you know, is it, the, is it the disease itself that is so severe that no matter what we do, all these clients who are in the ICU, they're more or less dying. Or is it, uh, is it something wrong that we're doing? Maybe we are not giving the right medication. Maybe, um, maybe putting a tube early on uh, was a bad choice. You know, we really don't know. Maybe if we wait another month, more results will come back. And uh, maybe there's more research coming out of New York City that will, uh, that will shed some more light. So for now, uh, as I said before, it's, it's up to the uh, ICU doctor's choice. Um, if they want to do the BiPAP or if they want to directly uh, put them on the uh, on the ventilator, um, so um, so we're going to go along with that. Um, so um, I think there are pros and cons to um, you know both groups, um, and and it's it's very hard. You know these people have so much inflammation in the lungs. You know we call it cytokine storm, where um, the body's immune system is attacking itself. It's uh, it's out of whack. You know the immune system really doesn't know how to deal with the virus. This is a what they call a novel virus, and uh, because of that, the immune system produces all kinds of um, uh, immune factors, and uh, these uh, these inflammatory markers or immune factors they cause inflammation throughout the body, through through the brain, to the heart, to the lungs, um, to the gut, and and through the nervous system and everywhere. So part of this inflammation is the the lung walls become really thick, 
the alveoli, the air sacs become really thick and we have to use a lot of pressure uh, so that the oxygen goes all the way to the bloodstream. Hey Jessica, thanks for uh, watching. So, uh, so it's really difficult to, uh, to treat these clients, you know, unless they come up with a new treatment. And, and my goal, my personal goal is, you know, as, as I have always talked in the last several years, my personal goal is for people to not reach this situation where, where the ICU doctor cannot do much for them. You know, it's, it's like leaving to the uh, mercy of God to decide if they're going to live or not. So instead of getting into that situation, the, the, the crucial part is to, is to make sure that your immune system is so strong that number one, you don't develop a severe illness if you develop an illness. Number two, even better, you know, you don't even develop an illness. So, so, the, so that's why I always talk about prevention, you know, lifestyle, immunity. Um, so um, there are so many different things that are there available, even over the counter that you can take to prevent this from happening. As I talked about it in previous videos, you know, taking things like zinc, vitamin C. Um, so, uh, as some of the studies are now showing that uh, consuming hydrogen peroxide, you know, obviously people are taking it to the extreme, but there's a way to, there's a proper way of doing that. So all of these things will really help the immunity. Um, and uh, if you feel that your immune system is out of whack, you know, feel free to give me a call. I can always uh, give you tips and tricks privately. And if you want a complete consultation, I'll be happy to do that. As, as I said before, feel free to um, um, register for my uh, Saturday uh, event. Uh, it's going to be an online event. You're, you're welcome to attend. I'm going to bring in a guest infection doctor here, um, see what his thoughts are. And uh, we'll share a case study, uh, one of the cases that uh, I was the attending physician for uh, on how the hospital course went. So, um, so feel free to touch base with me, you know, if you ever uh, need any private guidance. Hey, Linda, thanks for watching. So, um, so look forward to talking to you all again. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, those who are in healthcare, um, hopefully this is uh, coming to an end in the next few weeks and then we can uh, get back to our normal lives. So, um, so looking forward to uh, seeing you all again. Have a wonderful day.